come back Your dreams were your ticket I Welcome back To that same old place That you laughed about I take it from the laughter That some people Of my generation Recognizes that little tune Well, I'm really glad to be here tonight to share my story with you. Uh, I know it probably isn't very obvious by looking at me, but I have a medical condition. <laughs> I have asthma. <laughs> Thought you'd like that one. I also have cerebral palsy, um, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, when someone recently told me that um, the can talks were made for me, and the reason being is, anybody who knows me knows one thing about me. I can talk. <laughs> and talk, and talk, <laughs> and talk, and talk. But that's not the first time someone recognized this about me. When I was in high school, my special education homeroom teacher said to me, she said, Ruby, you know, you have the gift of gab. <laughs> now, I had no idea what the gift of gab was or what she meant. But she said to me, and I'll never forget it, she said, Ruby, you have the gift of gab. And if you learn to harness that, it will serve you well in your future. And boy, was she right. Because she convinced me to take this public speaking class, which allowed me to be on the speech and debate team. And the skills that I learned from doing both speech and debate and taking that class were skills that I was able to use and cultivate as, as a career, as a public speaker, motivational speaker, and a minister for the last 31 years. I, I've had the privilege of speaking to groups as small as five people. And the largest group to date is 5,000. You see, I discovered that I had a gift for being able to be comfortable on stage. And it's what I call my superpower. And all that changed, though, when the pandemic hit. You see, in an effort to keep myself safe, I isolated myself. And in the beginning, it was okay, because that's what everybody was doing. But even after I got the vaccine, I just couldn't bring myself to leave my house. And as a result, I started turning down speaking engagements where it involved having to show up live and in person and in front of a live audience. I thought I was keeping myself safe, but I was also systematically destroying a network of people that were allowing me 
to have my career here in Greenville that took me 12 years to create. And I was destroy, destroying it. And it forced me to take a good hard look at what I was doing and why. A friend of mine recently told me everybody has a COVID story. And I guess what you're hearing is mine. I was really afraid. And that's just what, what it came down to, fear. And as a result, I wasn't doing the thing that I loved the most. And I guess for tonight, if I had a takeaway from my experience, it would be uh, two things. One is I want people to know me because I'm more than just my disability. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not in denial about my disability. It's just that it's not the first thing I want people to know about me. I mean, it's kind of obvious, so that's the first thing they're gonna see. But what the first thing I want them to know is that I'm a husband. I'm a father. And just recently, I became a grandfather. <laughs> and it's my hope that there are people here tonight that will also say of me that I'm a good friend. And uh, the other thing that I would want people to take away is don't let fear keep you from achieving your goals. You see, I let fear paralyze me to the point to where I didn't leave my house even after I got the vaccine for three years. And I knew that I had to do something. Otherwise, I would never be able to do the thing that I love the most, which is speaking. Which, by the way, did you realize that the number one fear that people have it's not dying. <laughs> I thought it might be, but it's actually doing what I'm doing right now, public speaking. So essentially what that means for all, most of you is you would rather die <laughs> than be up here doing what I'm doing right now. And that's why, and that's why I want to congratulate all the speakers that came before me and all the speakers that came after me because doing this is my superpower. But that's not true for everybody. Doing this is not easy. But the other takeaway is that I want people to know that they can't let fear get in the way of accomplishing their goals. Because I let fear get a hold of me so badly that it literally, and I'm gonna say a bad word here, crippled me. 
And I say that because having been born with this disability, this is all I've known my whole life. This is me. And I've never really felt like disabled because I just felt like me. I had a friend of mine, we were having a discussion and he's also disabled. And he said to me, he said, you know, Ruben, you know what your problem is? And I said, what? He says, you don't think you're disabled. And I said, really? To which I responded, well, you know what your problem is? <laughs> That's all you think you are. Like I said, I am so much more than my d disability. And I just want people to know that um, more than anything else. And I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight to the Can Talks. Uh, because you are what, uh, my first stop on what I would like to call my come welcome back speaking tour. I just want to leave you with a couple more things. And that is, I've heard it said that courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to do what you must in spite of it. And as a minister, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you.